everybody, it's Lily, and I'm finally going to be talking about this mouse drawing stuff that I did. The idea was that I was going to do 30 different drawings in 30 days using a computer mouse to see my progress and to see how I improved, and it was kind of really tricky. So, you know, I have things going on, so I, I couldn't do the days consecutively. It just wasn't practical to do it every single day. Overall, I put about 30 hours into drawing with a computer mouse, and so I redrew this first picture of these um, sunglasses, and you'll see the redraw at the end. I'm gonna go through all the drawings, and we'll, we're just gonna take a little look at them. So this is the second drawing I drew, and a lot of these first early drawings use kind of some different textural brushes, and they're they're kind of odd. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Uh, yeah, the texture was just kind of off. But I wanted to practice some um, drawing some metal and some glass, some translucency, and so I chose to draw this little bottle of perfume that I have. It's like a Pacifica perfume. This is a picture of a hat my sister has in the living room. Uh, yeah, this one is- it's just a hat. It's- it's just another drawing. Not really my favorite or anything, but, you know, it's there. This one is pretty neat. It's a, it's a vase. This one, I was experimenting with textured brushes again, and I, I think it, it turned out alright. The next drawing I did is this little Japanese wooden doll, and I like how this one turned out a lot. I th This one's one of my favorites. I think it's just very pleasing looking. It's kind of stylized in a way. I was kind of playing with the reflection on the left side, creating some foreground, some background, some gradients. Rather than drawing everything with a brush, I started exploring using some shape tools. So that was really helpful. This one, I kind of went back and started using brushes again. So I don't, didn't really use a shape, the shape tools in this one. I don't know, I was really focusing on trying to get this glass to look translucent. I enjoy how this one turned out. I also played with some reflection on the foreground there. I just kind of copied the drawing and then turned it upside down and like kind of put it on there, you know, change some of the settings and stuff. It was, from what I remember, drawing this was incredibly difficult. Alright, so for this drawing I was just laying in my bed and I had my laptop. I was thinking, okay, now, now what should I draw? And I was just looking at this drawing that I have framed um, on my wall and I was like, I'm just gonna draw that over there. I blurred out the, the back corner wall back there to try to add some more perspective. Starting to learn how to use, uh, what is it, Gaussian blur? Gaussian blur? How do you pronounce that word? Somebody tell me in the comments. Anyway, I learned how to use blurring and stuff. So this is a tree, it's a charcoal, charcoal drawing of a tree I did in 2014, at the end of 2014, for my final in my drawing class. I drew it with some textured brushes, and I'm kind of surprised how close and similar I got to the original drawing. Maybe I will insert that drawing so you can see it. Just nice to draw, draw an environment, and I thought drawing another one of my drawings was kind of funny and kind of like Inception. So, yeah, okay, next drawing. So here was another time where I was just thinking, what am I going to draw? How about I draw my shoe? Because like in every art class, at some point you draw your shoe. This one, I decided to try the uh, textured brushes again to try to give it kind of a pastel look to it. And I, I think this one turned out kind of nice. Um, I really tried to pay attention to detail on the stitching of the shoe. So this is my first of three drawings of different baseball caps that I have. And this is also the worst one I did. This hat is just kind of shaped weird. The drawing looks weird, but the hat also kind of looks weird. I tried doing some detailed stitching along this hat, and I did that on all three hats. And by the time I was doing the stitching on the last hat, I was going insane because this is such a slow, tedious process. But honestly, those kind of details really pump your drawing up to like the next level. I think this one might actually be my favorite hat. It's the second one, and it's my Montana hat. I enjoy this red color I chose. It's very appealing. Um, I tried to capture the embroidery on the um, the little mountain range and the MT, and I I think it turned out pretty good. I like the sh the way the shape is. Again, the stitching details, 
and kind of going over those wrinkles. I think it looks pretty nice. Also, those little, what are those, like the tiny little holes? I'll circle it or something. Those things, what are those? Do you know what they're used for? Also, this the button on the top. What is that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I've never thought about this before. I'm sure there's a purpose for these things. If you know, totally l let me know in the comments. So this is the last hat, and it's my dolphin adventure hat that I found at a thrift store. I don't know what dolphin adventure is, but I kind of liked it and I thought it was cute. So yeah, this is my dolphin hat, and I think... I think it is about on par with the skill level of the Montana hat. I think they're both they're both about there, about the same level. Um, again, some stitching. This one only had three rows of stitching though, so lots of that to worry about. Again, trying to make the embroidery look good, and yeah. So those are my three hats. Let's see what I did next. Okay, here we go. Remember that vase? thing that I was- that I, I drew earlier. Well, I decided I wanted to try to do um, a drawing kind of based on the artist Rene Magritte. He is one of my favorite surreal- or like surrealism artists and he does a lot of kind of cloudy environmental stuff. Yeah, I was just seeing how kind of interesting and atmospheric I could make it look. That reflection in the water and uh, yeah, I was playing with gradients and things like that. And so keeping with this similar theme, I decided to make another kind of environment work and this is the entry into the hallway. And instead of going into the hallway, I decided it goes into like a night scene, sunset. And I decided to change my wall into a cloud, cloudy wall. Kind of recreated this picture that we have hung up, except I kind of gave it my own little twist. So you got like three different environments going on in this drawing and I thought it was kind of pretty and kind of cool. So after that I decided I wanted to try drawing some food because I like drawing food. It's actually pretty fun. I wanted to render it so it looked like maybe a low poly video game waffle. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, I was really focusing on using gradients and blending and smoothing using more shapes here rather than using the brush. You know, I use like shape tools and distort it and use the perspective tool, things like that. Exploring more tool options. So this is my favorite drawing. I think this might be the best one I did. It's also the one that took the most time. All of these drawings up until now took maybe like an hour, hour and a half, about somewhere in that range. And this one, I put an hour in and I was like, I need to finish it. So I put another hour in and I was like, I still need to finish it. So I put another hour in and I think I put in like three hours, 20 minutes total, but it was worth it. I totally love this one. It's my ukulele and my ukulele strap on there. This is the, the one where I really explored sh uh, tools using shapes and stuff and distorting. Um, selecting things and like moving the selection over to create the shadows, processes like that. I also learned how to use the smoothing tool for uh, brushes and so that's how I did that strap. So I I'm just so pleased with it. I think it turned out really nicely. Uh, I turned the smoothing all the way up to like 70 and it seriously made my life so much easier. Yeah, I'm just very pleased with this one. The one problem I have with it is that the bridge, the shark bridge, is a little bit too too much down and too much to the right. Just a tiny bit. Like I if I just wish I could just grab it and move everything up and to the to the left. Just a little bit. But then if I did that I would have to move all the strings, I'd have to move the shading on the strings. There's a lot of things I would have to try to fix. So just have I just have to accept the fact that it's off a little bit, but it sort of drives me a little bit crazy to look at. I I like this drawing. I I am pleased with this drawing overall. It's I'm I think I did a good job. So I drew another still life. I just was enjoying how the light from our lamp was hitting this particular leaf kind of in the middle, and I wanted to capture that. 
and I think that the the actual plant part is probably my favorite. It kind of has these undulating kind of curves and it's it's very elegant and I enjoy it. The composition of this piece, you know, it hits those nice sweet spots, you know, the rule of thirds and stuff. I enjoy this one. I think this is one of the more successful ones. Okay, so obviously this is a major step down from the last drawing. I have a hard time drawing people. Okay, I can I can draw people all right when I'm using an actual medium, like a traditional medium, like you know, pencil or charcoal or something like that. I can do I can do okay. But drawing digitally for one thing, people digitally, impossible. And digitally with a mouse, even more impossible. And also, I find drawing- this is a picture of my sister- I find drawing family members even more difficult. Maybe it's because I know them too well, so I have a harder time at looking at them in an objective stance, I suppose? Everything about this drawing just frustrates me. You should be thankful that I'm- I put this white block over her face, because it was low-key terrifying. Honestly, I'm, I just felt so bad, because my sister's beautiful. And this drawing didn't even like come close to looking like her and it just it feels bad man <laughs> maybe I should make a video where I try to get good at drawing people people and animals two things that I just have such a hard time drawing I just don't even know anyway let's move on um, I don't really have much to say about this drawing other than it is a drawing of the bottom of the glass at the waffle place. Like the bottom of the, the glass there is like really interesting and has this really cool kind of star-like pattern on it. So I took a picture and I was trying to kind of recreate that in kind of an abstract way. So my sister is currently getting a tattoo. I mean, not currently at this moment, but she has a tattoo in progress. And so I kind of wanted to try making some kind of tattoo-like designs. So I kind of tried that for a little bit. Here's the first one. Obviously those last ones were roses, by the way. Okay, so this one's a hydrangea. And I swear these these flowers might be one of the most difficult flowers to draw. Pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Um, I tried doing kind of a lineless style I tried. And I think it looks less good, but it's okay. Not every drawing can be a success, you know? And so this one, I, it's some t sort of wild rose. Yeah, so for these flowers, I've been using the circular gradient. And for this flower in particular, I was trying to teach myself how to use vectors. And I did that for a while. It was working. It was just taking a long time. And so I was like, oh, scrap it and just do it like normal. All of the other ones completely drawn by me uh, looking at a reference, either in real life or a picture. I'm like. All the pictures I used, by the way, I've taken them all. But this one, because I had wasted so much time trying to do vectors, I decided I was going to do a little bit of tracing. And this is also my reference photo. But yeah, I like how this one turned out. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so now we're going to compare my first drawing. This is the first drawing I did. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes. I redrew this one. Same amount of time, hour and 15 minutes. I would say that there's kind of a remarkable improvement. The last drawing was really shaky. I don't really know what I was doing. I didn't know how to use like shape tools or how to blend things using the blurring tool. I feel like I've, I've learned so many things. So if you wanna see the comparison of how I approach these two different drawings, I will have an extra video that you can click at the end of this video where I compare both of those processes. This is the progress that I made for about 30 hours of practicing using a computer mouse for drawing on Photoshop, and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I'll see you in my next video. Hope you have a great week. Bye!